Hello everyone. So today I'm going to start discussing the medicine structure. Once we cover the basic structure for medicine stations, we will start discussing each medicine station one by one, starting with chest pain and then headache and so on. All right. So um, the basic structure for medicine station, basically all the diagnostics type of stations, whether medical or surgical, is basically the same. So the first thing that we do is cover history. And then there is eyes, which is ideas, concerns, and expectations. And after that, there is examination. And then there is management. Now, the history is further divided into three parts. All right. So I'm going to discuss this uh, quite in detail. And you need to follow the same exact structure uh, in each station. Because if you look at the marking uh, scheme of the PLAP2 exam, you also get points for a structured station. So if you follow uh, a particular structure, in your consultation, it appears to the examiner that you are organized and you are uh, structured. But if you uh, go haphazard and you jump between past medical history and present medical history and then psychosocial and effect of symptom and examination and concerns, and then you are just going back and forth randomly, then it does uh, give a very negative impact. It not, not only affects the marks for your structure, the score for your structure as well, but in doing so, you are also more likely to miss many important points and then and thus um, reduce your overall score. OK, so be sure to memorize the structure and follow it uh, in all the medicine stations. OK. So starting with the history, history has basically three major parts, which are then further subdivided into other parts. So the first part, as you are all aware, is history of presenting complaint. And then we have the past medical history. And after that, we have the third part, which is meftosa and psychosocial. Now, what is meftosa and psychosocial? I'm going to discuss this in detail as well. And you might be wondering about this triangle that I have drawn here. I will also explain the purpose of this as well as you proceed further. Okay, so starting with uh, history of presenting complaint. Sorry. So starting with the history of presenting complaint, which is P1. In P1, you are going to explore in detail the the symptom with the, which the patient has presented with okay so for example a patient with a patient has presented with pain or headache or you know uh, chest pain or uh, leg pain so if the presenting complaint is pain you need to follow socrates if the presenting complaint is anything other than the pain then you need to follow odipara okay so Socrates is basically sight. For example, if the patient tell you, I have chest pain. So what do you need to ask? You need to ask Socrates. So you need to ask sight. Okay, where do you have the pain? Then answer it. When did it start? Corrector. So can you please describe the pain for me? Then radiation. Does the pain go anywhere? Alleviating factor. Um, by any chance, anything that makes it better. Timing. Um. So is there any particular time when the pain starts, exacerbating factor, anything that is making it worse and severity? So for severity, you need to ask, um, can you please uh, can you please rate your pain on a scale of one to 10, where one is the least pain and 10 is the worst pain that you have ever experienced. So basically, Socrates is for pain, okay? Patient presents with pain in any part of the body, you need to do Socrates. If the patient present with any other symptom, any other symptom but pain, like if the patient present with shortness of breath or the patient present with cough, then you need to do Odipara, okay? Because then Socrates doesn't fit, um, doesn't fit really well with uh, anything else other than pain. So for that, you need to do Odipara. So what is Odipara? So in Odipara, the first thing is onset. Okay, so when did it start? So for example, the patient has cough. You need to ask, when did it start? All right, how did it start? When did it start? And then intensity, okay, how severe it is and progression. Um, is it becoming worse uh, since it started? Okay, is it becoming worse or better since it started? So this tells you about progression. And then aggravating factor, relieving factor, anything making it better or worse, and then associated symptoms, all right? So these two things are basically the first uh, uh, the first thing that you need to ask the patient or Socrates, Socrates or Odipara, and you need to follow this structure, like you have marks for completing Socrates and Odipara. So 
be sure that you ask this completely and uh, don't leave any any part in this okay so after you do uh, socrates and odibara you need to ask about your differential diagnosis so the first thing is an open ended question all right so the first thing will be do you uh, experience anything else other than the symptom for example the patient has chest pain so you need to ask anything else apart from the chest pain, all right? So if the patient voluntarily tells you that, yes, doctor, I also have nausea with this chest pain and a few other things, then you need to uh, explore those in details. But if the patient doesn't tell you, the patient, the patient asks, like, what doctor? So then you need to rule out the differential diagnosis. So you need to ask, for example, if you have chest pain, then you must know at least four to five differential for chest pain. If you have cough, then you must need uh, must know about four to five differential for cough. So you need to ask questions about those differential diagnoses and rule it out here. Okay, then the red flags. What are the red flags? Red flags are basically very important differential diagnoses that you can't miss. Okay, so red flags are basically um, red flags are basically life threatening conditions. For for example, the patient has chest pain. You need to rule out myocardial infarction and pulmonary embolism. If you do not rule out these red flags, you will fail the station. No matter how good your communication skills are, no matter how good you provide management, even if the patient presents with musculoskeletal pain and you diagnose that this is musculoskeletal pain and you provide the perfect management, perfect communication skills, but for example, you forgot to rule out pulmonary embolism, then there is no way that you can pass the station. You must rule out the red flags, okay? So uh, red flags are basically differentials, but the extra stress on the, and this is because of their importance. So in presenting a uh, history of presenting complaint, we ask about Socrates or Odipara, all right? After completing Socrates or Odipara, we ask, do you have anything else? Which is basically, um, which is basically an open question for differential diagnosis. After that, you ask specific symptom for each of your differential diagnosis, and then you must remember to ask about red flags. All right, and red flags are important that in a sense that uh, you also, at the end of your management, you also need to safety net about your patients about these red flags, all right? Okay, so um, coming to the second part of history, which is basically past history. Past history has further two parts. Um, past history of the presenting complaint and past medical history in general. So, for example, the patient has presented with chest pain, you need to ask, has this happened before? If the patient presented with cough, you need to ask, has this happened before? So, past history of the presenting complaint and then past medical history in general. So, for example, the patient has presented with chest pain, then you, do need, you need to ask the relevant past medical history, that is, do you have any uh, have you ever been diagnosed with diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol problem or heart disease? Okay. So that was your past medical history, which is the second part of the history taking. Then the third part of the history taking is Meftosa and Kefedex. Okay, so these are two, these are basically two mnemonics which you need to remember and which you need to ask. So Meftosa is basically uh, Meftosa stands for medicines. So you need to ask the patient, do you do you, are you on any regular medications? Okay. Do you take any medicines or are you on any regular medications? Do you have any allergies? Do you have any family history? Uh, family history, you need to ask about relevant family history. For example, patient is presented with chest pain. You need to ask, do you have any family history of uh, heart disease? If patient presented with cough, you need to ask, do you have any family history of lung diseases? Okay. Travel history, travel history, you do not need to ask in each and every station, um, only in stations where it is relevant. For example, patient is coughing a lot, patient has fever. So you need to ask um, travel history to rule out tuberculosis, but not in every station. Okay. Then the OSA stands for basically psychosocial. So in psychosocial, you need to ask uh, what do you do for a living? Who do you live with? And what is the effect of symptoms on your daily life? How is it affecting your daily life? Okay. Then Kefedex. Kefedex is basically there are lifestyle questions, lifestyle questions uh, about habits, about diet, etc. So C stands for cigarettes. So basically smoking. Do you smoke? And do you drink alcohol? Uh, what about your diet? Do you do exercise? Sorry, I missed out exercise here. Uh, so after food, there is exercise. Um, so do you do exercise? And then 
there this D stands for recreational drugs and this X stands for sexual history. Again, these two things you do not need to ask about um, in every stations because they can be offensive uh, to patients. So, for example, if the patient is presenting with, uh, you know, uh, diarrhea and you ask about sexual history or um, the patient has gastroenteritis and you ask about recreational drugs. No, you need to ask in cases where you have a patient who is IV drug abusers or you are suspecting HIV or if you have a homeless patient, we will discuss this in further details as we go along the course. But remember that drugs, uh, recreational drugs and sexual history, you do not need to ask in each and every station other, uh, unless it is relevant, okay? So this is basically the end of your history part. So P1, which is presenting history, history of presenting complaint, then P2, which is history of uh, past medical illness, and then P3, which include Meftosa and Kefedex. All right, so... After a history, there is examination, but between the history and examination, there is a very crucial part, which is called as ICE. ICE is again a mnemonic, which stands for ideas, concerns, expectations. So you need to ask the patient, do you have any idea what might be the cause of your symptoms? Is there anything in specific that you are concerned about, you are worried about, and then expectations, is there anything in particular that you are expecting us to do for you? Okay, so uh, if you do not have sufficient time, uh, you just need to ask one of these, anything in particular that you are concerned about, or um, do you have any idea what might be the cause of your symptoms? But um, you need to touch on this if you do not, if you take, let me tell you, if you take a perfect history, do perfect examination, and provide perfect management, but you forget to ask about ideas and concerns and expectations of the patient, then you will fail this station. And many, many people, they do not have the insight that they, they do not ask ideas concerns and expectation and that is basically the cause of their failure okay so this is the most important part of uh, the station basically okay so after ideas concerns and expectation you need to do examination all right and uh, in most of the plateau station examination you only need to verbalize and the examiner will give you written uh, the examination findings written on a piece of paper only one or two stations will be like where you need to uh perform the examination on a dummy okay all right uh then the management part so of course management will be different for different type of diseases but the basic steps of management are always the same so once you uh, take all the history and then you ask about ideas concerns and expectation and you perform examination uh, you have an idea of what the diagnosis is. So you need to explain the diagnosis in very simple and very few sentences to the patient. Don't go into the details of pathophysiology and everything. Just um, simple words of what the diagnosis is, okay? Then, uh, so when you ask about ideas, concerns, and expectation, the patient, patient will exp express some concerns here. So you need to address those concerns in the management uh, what this is a very um, this is a very common mistake that many candidates do is they ask about ideas, concerns, and expectations, but they forget to address these concerns in the management. They think that okay, I will address this concern when we come to the management part, but then they forget it, and it also has a very negative impact on the score. So if you the patient tell you, doctor, I am concerned about um a heart attack. If the patient has chest pain and he's concerned about heart attack, but from your examination and history, you know that this is musculoskeletal pain. So, although you ask about the concern and the patient has told you, you explain the diagnosis and then you forget to address the concern and you provide management for musculoskeletal pain. But the patient is still worried. You have not like given him um, an absolute answer that no, this is not chest pain. This is not, sorry, um, how to take the patient is still worried you have not addressed the concern so you will only get two marks in management and not four okay so you do need to address the concerns at all costs after that the third step is admission observation or discharge so you need to decide whether this patient we need to admit or whether we need to keep him under observation or he can go home okay so the third step you need to inform the patient whether we are going to admit you today or whether we are going to observe you for a few hours or you can go home and you are good to go home the fourth step is basically symptomatic treatment. So symptomatic treatment is like paracetamol for pain and uh, antiemetics for nausea and stuff like that. And then specific treatment. So in this specific treatment, for example, antibiotics for infection. Okay. 
um, happening, etc. for MI. So and when you verbalize the specific treatment, because you are just going to be an FY2 or FY1, you cannot provide antibiotics, you cannot provide like specific treatment on your own. So here you need to verbalize, I'm going to discuss your case with my seniors, and we are going to give you some antibiotics, or we are going to give you um, you know, some blood thinning medication or stuff like that. Safety netting. The last step is basically safety netting. So in safety netting, if you are admitting the patient, you need to tell the patient that uh, if your condition worsens, there is a bell near your bed which you need to press and one of us will be around. So this will be your safety netting in case of admitted patients. But in case of the patients which you are going to send home, you need to tell them about the red flag. So, so for example, if the patient has chest pain, you need to tell him if the pain increases, if it is radiating to your jaw, if it is radiating to your arm, or you are feeling nauseous and sweaty, please call 999 or visit the emergency department. Okay, so please do not forget septinating as well. So all of these carry, basically carry points. If you cover all of these, you will get like four by four in management. But do remember, if you forget to address your concerns, uh, the patient's concerns, you are going to get only two marks in the management. Some people, they provide like very good management, all the specific treatment, explain the diagnosis to the patient. Then they are again like get two marks in the management. And then they are... Uh, thinking that I provide like the best management and still I have two marks. Uh, but basically, they forget to address the concerns and uh, the examiner doesn't really like it. So that was basically about the basic structure of medicine stations. And now we are going, after this, we are going to discuss each uh, specific stations one by one.